Let's get into this on this Saturday, beautiful morning. Well, it's after 12 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, I've been gone for a few days. I know y'all miss me because there's people talking to me at work. So I want to speak about, uh, and this Saturday, you're going to get, you're going to get the real Kwame today because it's Saturday and I'm, I got my red cup in my hand. So you might meet Quan Low today and not Kwame because some of you got me misconstrued with all this babble y'all like to talk on the internet. So let me sip and let's get into this. Woo. So, um, Elijah Bobby Henderson, uh, you seem to be wanting to make a career off of uh, black people's misfortune. Um, the only thing that I said on Marcus Baker Live and the only thing that I speak to my people is truth to power. So you seem to be the type of brother that always have an excuse. You said to me, I'm building a reputation in debate. No, I'm building a reputation in results. You are going to be, and I don't know you, and you don't know me, but based on the things you say, you're starting to turn into, from me here. The white people who align with me that's saying you can, because there's some dudes that align to me and black folks that align with me that say, I don't need nobody, I can do it. But no, we have a bunch of people that want to listen to people that tell them they can't. And that's bullshit. We want to speak this nigga speak. And I'm going to say it. That's nigga talk. That relating everything to the struggle. Relating everything to the hood. Motherfucker, I'm proud to make it out the hood. And should no child live in the fucking hood. If it was up to me, it wouldn't never child live in the hood. So this whole identifying your blackness with the hood and this fake talking like it's a struggle and all this bullshit, I don't identify with that, dude. My life speaks for itself. Yours should too. And all of you motherfuckers that's sitting here talking about this, we shall overcome because you want a job and all this fuck shit, I'm going to be real with you. That shit, the gig is up. I'm going to attack every last one of you motherfuckers. Because it ain't nothing you can say to me that's going to get me to think like you. And people who put one foot in front of the other and do what they're supposed to do, they accomplish their goals. Why in the fuck are y'all telling people not to accomplish their goal? Huh? Because you want to be the next pastor or something? You want to be the next big thing or something? You going to make it off other people's demise or something? Like this shit, this shit don't make no sense. This shit don't make no sense. Everybody coming on my live waiting on what I say because I'm not your typical celebrity. I'm not going to tell you we being hunted down in the streets. If we being hunted down in the streets, we being hunted down from other niggas. Now, that's a fact. I don't want to hear all this crybaby bullshit every day. Now, let me sip because I'm parched. But half of you motherfuckers, and I'm going to say motherfuckers, Half of you motherfuckers that talk all this talk about the hood and talk all this talk about what would help black folk, you motherfuckers wouldn't come nowhere near where I'm from. I'm the kid that couldn't get on, that their daddy would not allow me, they wouldn't allow their kid to date me. I'm the kid when I showed up prior to being drafted because of where I lived and who I knew, I, they would, didn't want their daughter to date me. So you're not going to tell me that where you're from, what you do, and how you behave don't have something to do with your treatment in life, jackass. How you behave, how you act, your lineage, where you're from, directly result or directly have something to do with your education. It has something to do with your treatment in life, your placement in life. All of this is connected. So to keep preaching this bullshit that y'all are preaching... You, you might want to you might want to sell somebody something. I want to sell you a T-shirt. That's if you like it. That's if you like it. Everybody's selling somebody something. That's if you like it. I'm not going to tell people that they're less than or they can't do. That's bullshit. And Richard, I see you on here. Richard, we had a conversation last night. What did I say to you, Richard? I'm shocked at how you can work your ass off in a fireman's uniform. 
What did I say? I wanted to challenge myself to be able, I begged you, can you find a, a fireman's outfit? Because I want to see if I can do it. I would like to see if I could put my body through what you put your body through to actually save lives and not just run your fucking mouth like most of these people do. You actually save lives. So I want to put myself through that to see if I can do that. That's the type of person I am. But these people now, and I see it, and I feel sad for us as a people. We are allowing people to speak for us so much, and I used to do that. I used to allow bankers to go make a transaction for me. I used to allow CPAs and other people to make a transaction for me. And you know what happened? Those people built relationships that I could have built on my fucking own. Those people did things that I could have did on my own. What happens to people that keep putting other people in place to do things that you can do yourself? Everybody takes a fucking cut. So right now we got black people that don't want to do a motherfucking thing for themselves. Some of you. And everybody taking a cut out your ass. Everybody taking a cut because you don't want to be fucking responsible. We keep listening to motherfuckers like Elijah Bobby Henderson, people who probably want to be a pastor, people who probably want to be something they ain't been in high school or nowhere else. Brother, brother, I'm not bragging. I have a history of success, my man. History. History of success. And that's because of that. I have a history of success. A history of success. A history, a history of success, my brother. And that's not to brag. That's mindset. I don't give a shit how much money you give a person. Until they change their mindset, it does not matter. It doesn't matter. We keep trying to do all this bullshit, and it's starting to piss me off. So let me sit. And Richard, if you make that possible, I would definitely appreciate it. And I would like to bring some young men out there that maybe potentially want to be firemen and maybe get these young boys to do something else other than wanting to be a rapper. Other than wanting to be somebody who run they fucking mouth. Other than somebody that got to sit up under a, a, a somebody else to, to make themselves seem right. Because the things that we saying out our mouth right now are making absolutely no fucking sense. America burning down and we talking about black people getting shot, but we killing black people every fucking day. White people are speaking for us. They out there tearing up cities and we going to be left holding the fucking bag. And then when somebody try to tell you something positive, I ain't out here hurting nobody. I ain't out here disrespecting nobody. You might not like what I say, but I'm an authentic man. Marcus Baker, I am going to buy your book. Guess why? Because I like to know the other side. Because you're a black man who's doing something that's positive. Because you're not out shooting people. Because you're out being an example for your kids. I can respect that. So no matter whether we agree or disagree, I can respect that enough to buy your book and tell other people to buy your book because you are positive. And we don't celebrate positive men. We celebrate the nigga who go to jail. Or we celebrate the liars. We celebrate men that tell women, oh no, it, it ain't your fault. You got five kids. Oh, you just, the man was wrong. And the next day you know he's sliding his dick up in him. I'm not that man. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth. And those of you that can't take the truth, and Elijah Bobby Henderson, when you get off work, sir, I would love to go live with you, sir. I would love for your SJW talking points to stand up to reality. Because there ain't no motherfucking racism, ain't no motherfucking nobody stood in the way of me, of my mindset of what I wanted to do. And I would rather raise young men and young women that think like me than the bullshit that you preaching, sir. And I'll stand on mine, ten toes down, I'll stand on mine. All that crying and whining and all this shit that we're doing, fuck all that. Period. Fuck all that. 
Y'all want to be negative all day fucking long. And anytime somebody tell y'all something, y'all want to fight the black person who told you the right thing. And for those of y'all that don't know me and all this shit that he said on the text message and all that. Let me see it. Because if you think I care about a reputation in a debate, then you're a fucking idiot. I don't give a shit about the reputation in a debate. Yeah, my broadcast is going to keep being up, uh, interrupted because these people are powerful people. And the shit that I say is, is truth to power. And you can't hide that. You can't hide that. They, they just try to pin celebrities and whatever else against people that they say, they, they, they speak nigga talk to them. And he ain't like you because he made it. And so now he don't know us. He don't think different than us. He not like us. Fuck all that and fuck you too if you think like that. That is the dumbest shit I ever heard. Motherfucker, I'm from the grassroot ground. I ain't have a goddamn thing. I had shoes. I had no shoes on when I played basketball, motherfucker. And I earned my way. I earned my goddamn way. So why the fuck you don't want to earn your way? Why don't you want to earn your goddamn way? You always want to cry all the goddamn time. Well, I'm tired of hearing you fucking cry. I'm tired of hearing that shit. Now let me sip. Everybody want to have debates in a... No, let me sip like I said. Until you disrespect me. Me and that brother Marcus, the reason why I supported that brother and the reason why I, I, I posted his book, he didn't disrespect me. He didn't talk to me out of it. He disagreed. But he's, he's at least educated enough not to insult another person just because he disagreed. Now, his wife, on the other hand, and the people that's in the comment section, they were a little disrespectful. But at the end, my woman wasn't no line making no fucking comments. My woman, no, I'm a big boy. I speak for myself. I'm a man. And not to say fee, fi, fo, firm, because society is telling you there's no such thing as a man and everything we say is toxic. But I'll tell you one motherfucking thing. Men, real men, the men that I'm talking about, the type of woman that get hit by a man and a man see that, they punish that man. They spank that man. But I'm the type of man, if I saw that woman put his, her hands on that man first, I look away. Because to me, that's not a woman. So I have boundaries in what I consider what a man is. Some of you soy boy ass dudes don't have no boundaries and you teaching your sons that shit. I watched a football player tell a woman, hey, you're not doing right by my son. And what did this woman do? She punched him all in the goddamn face. He has to hold his hands up and he, y'all want to talk about the cops and holding them accountable. What about the other people we need to hold accountable? A woman gets to punch a man in his face and if it's not on video, then nothing happens. And then she'll be out the next fucking day. Well, the same day. And then she'll get a job somewhere lickety fucking split. But if that man would have said, stop, motherfucker, then nobody will hire him. And that's what we're teaching our sons. That's what we're teaching our sons. And then you wonder why black men, because you, you, some of you sorry bitches are the worst things on fucking earth. Because you get credit for doing a goddamn thing, and all you do is run your fucking mouth, and all you do is be violent. And then when a nigga spank your ass, you got a court system to tell you you was right. I don't raise my son like that. I raise my son like my mama taught me. Anybody who, are bring, who is bringing you physical in an environment where there's no jobs, where people are already frustrated, stuck in their homes, and you motherfuckers think that's a good thing? Boy, I'm trying to buy so many goddamn bullets you won't even think. I'm trying to buy so many bullets and bulletproof vests that you won't even think of. Because now they got you guys dumbed down. Most of us black men, we ain't shit. Most of you motherfuckers living off women. Oh, oh that hurt your feelings. Either you're hustling or living off a bitch. Excuse my French. But I gotta sit. Because y'all done pissed me the fuck off. And you know where I'm from. 
I only know how to go one or two ways. I know how to be this way and I know how to be that way, but I don't know how to do no gray area. So let me see it. And it's Saturday and I'm not driving. But I do know this. We got to stop fucking crying. You motherfuckers want to speak, speak and preach Wakanda. How many black businesses you got with another black person? I wait. I wait. I watched a video of a young man of two black people bumped into each other. One was a football player and one was a skinny motherfucker with skinny jeans with a purse on his goddamn. It was very specific in the way she ran her mouth. She only ran her mouth to dudes probably because a woman would beat that ass. So you watch your mama run her goddamn mouth with no recourse. So now you think you can do it as a man. Now I'm calling on all men. If a woman call you a bitch, most men will walk off and say, she's an idiot. What will happen if a man call you a bitch? This is why you can't keep having just women raise these young boys. When you raising men and you teaching them something because it's learned behavior. A lot of you young boys talk and act and, and, and behave just like your mama. I disagree with somebody and I still support their book. I can't wait to purchase this book and show it online to show you I'm not an emotional male. And I'm going to read it and I'm going to be able to take talking points from it and maybe potentially talk to this brother about it. Because I thought that's what men do. But some of you motherfuckers only heard one side so much. Mama's always right. Ah! The fuck is wrong with y'all? Do you not see the result of what's going on out here? Do you not see? Let's all and the only person that's championing your punk ass is women. These black women, the same black women that's taking care of 90% of you punk motherfuckers. And you know what? I know some of you gonna say, oh, statistics, where you getting your statistics from? Nigga, I can look at the projects. I can go to the projects, right? I'm an authentic, real man. Am I the best man? Am I a perfect man? Absolutely not. <laughs> but I'm still going to sip. Y'all see that curved ass pinky going up? <sighs> I, Richard, I, I know you might can think I could do it. And I might can. But I just got to see. See what I'm saying? There's a lot of, there's a difference between and I'm going to say a can-do nigga, and I should say a can-do brother. For my white people, y'all say can-do brother. I'm a can-do nigga. And so I don't like being around crybaby-ass niggas. I don't like, see, a nigga that's just going to sit there and cry all day. When you with a woman, my woman cry. My woman do certain things that I wouldn't bring myself to do. But I'm going to comfort her. I'm going to be that voice of reason and I'm going to go figure out a way to make her stop fucking crying. I'm not going to sit there and cry with her. Some of you niggas is sitting there crying with these women and say, yeah, call your baby daddy because the rent do need to be paid. He is a deadbeat. Call your baby daddy because we need to get these bills paid. And girl, if I need to fuck him up, girl, I'll do it because he a bitch ass nigga. And some of you women are falling for that shit. I first of all, let's not call them women. Let's separate the little ass girls I'm talking about from women because little ass girls are impressed by the shit I'm talking about. Women, y'all can just listen and smile and sip your drink like I'm sipping it because I'm not talking about you. The women that respond to this in a negative way, I'm because you guys are creating these niggas that shooting out in these goddamn streets. Take them steps to better your situation. No, they don't take no steps to better their situation. They just sit there and think everything hood is the right thing. I got somebody told me one day, you ain't no real nigga. You ain't from the hood. You ain't real like her. And I'm looking at him like, motherfucker, you don't know nothing about me. So anytime a black man reach a level of success, now he could be ridiculed and he's not from the hood. First of all, Newsflash, motherfucker. 
it's not a good thing to be from the hood. I don't give a fuck if I'm not from the hood no more. Fuck you. I live out here where I can breathe and I can live in peace and I can grow my motherfucking tomato. I got a cucumber I just grew that's that motherfucking big. You think I want to be in the hood? You motherfuckers that keep trying to identify. You motherfuckers, some of you motherfucking punk motherfuckers got college degrees and all kind of shit. But this infatuation with the hood is killing you. You motherfuckers going to visit a trap house? Well, I wish I could have took you to the trap house at 913 MLK. But guess what, motherfucker? They knocked it down. It's not there no more. It, the, the trap house I grew up in, not there no more. And I bet you, you punk motherfuckers couldn't live in the trap house. But you want to go take pictures in one. Because somebody made gangsterism and trap. Beautiful white, black, Latino. I told you I had a Mexican girlfriend. Ooh, I ran for the board. Anyway, I love all women. But you bitch. She ain't never talk about you. <laughs> and if you got mine, guess what? I ain't never fight you. I got baby mamas. Go get them. Have fun. Think about me while you're doing it. I don't give a shit. I'm grown. You niggas need to learn how to be fucking men. This Kangil shit, this man shit is for real. The fuck is wrong with you, dude? You've been listening to mama too fucking long. And some of you punk ass soy boy niggas, the reason why you only kill black folks is because you know. You talk all this shit that white people scared of you. You know goddamn well white people ain't scared of you. Oh, it's because. Oh, it's because. You wait for the CNN report to tell you why you should think it's okay. Oh, that's why it's okay? And then you regurgitate it back on the internet. Nigga, that's stupid. That's why most motherfuckers, when you have a conversation with them outside of the talking points that they look at on CNN and all these punk ass places, they don't make any sense. They don't make any sense. You motherfuckers have been brainwashed. You've been programmed. You, spring, you, you scream Wakanda on one end and you got 10 niggas on your list that you can't stand right fucking now. I'll tell you what, if it's really Wakanda, there's a city in Georgia that's worth $1.2 million. I think I heard Lil Boosie say he gonna buy the city. I want you niggas to prove white folks that you can do it without white folk. All this money black folks got, all this black excellence motherfuckers wanna talk about, go buy that city. I hope Lil Boosie buy it. And I hope it's successful. I wanna see it. I want to see you rebuild. You keep talking about motherfucking Oklahoma City and they tore down Oklahoma City, but every other motherfucking race that they took something away from them and tore it down, guess what, simple-minded motherfuckers? They rebuilt it. They rebuilt it. So are you saying we're not resilient enough to rebuild what somebody took down? I got my ass whipped many a day. My brother on here, Tar, beat my ass damn near every day. I lost fights to niggas on the streets. But guess what? That never stopped me from throwing these things. That ain't gonna never stop. I forgot that last loss as soon as I woke up or whatever happened. I forgot that shit. Because I'm fighting for the understanding. Motherfucker, you gonna break a sweat fucking with me. That's how I am. I don't give a fuck. Win, lose, or draw. Don't kill me, bro. You win. Don't keep beating on me. You, you niggas emotional. Nigga, I go get beers with niggas that whip my ass. Me and my brother, we fight all the time. I cuss that motherfucker out. I cussed Tark, tell me if I'm lying. I cussed Tark out two, three weeks later, told him all kind of shit. And we was on the island having a beer, hugged up a week later. You motherfuckers sick now. Let me sip on that, because that probably hurts somebody. So let me sip. Some of my best friends are people I fought multiple times until we became friends. Say your light skin ass in high school. What the fuck you mean? You were hitting and tackling them niggas, and goddamn, I was out there dunking on everybody. And because you were light skin, you were getting all the. Let me sip, cause you just you just made me relapse on why I don't like light skin people. Well, I I, I recovered. I recovered light skin people. I recovered. I used to not like you, motherfucker. But to act like. That that's not a real thing? You motherfuckers crazy. We had, we had a misunderstanding at the end of the day. We are brothers. Live and let go of beef. 
Yeah, it's easy to say that, Tar, after you the one whipping ass all the time. It's easy to say after you done punched me in my shit, talking about live and let go. Nigga, you whip my ass so much, and guess what? I appreciate that. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that I had a brother that, and brothers that taught me this level of pecking order in life. I don't just open my mouth and say certain shit because I know what can happen. I could be punched in my shit. And I'd rather you do that than get to the gun. I'm respectful. Most of these young men that haven't had a heavy influence of man, men, watch how they talk. Boy, they talk with this invincibility like no other. They play basketball. I helped spank people because that's what we was into. And once I was able to see and realize that that's not a life that I want to live. It's not a life I want for my children. I'm able to make decisions as a man. And that's why no matter who like me or not, I say and I act and I talk like a man. At the end of the day, I'm peaceful with it. I don't want to put no hands on you. At this day and age, why the fuck would you want to put your hands on another man not knowing what he got? You're a clown if you do that. You're a clown. You should be able to have a conversation and, and move on from that conversation. But some of you niggas so sensitive, you can't move on from the conversation. Kwame, I had you on them weights. You fresh, your freshman year. Come on, bro. I don't give a damn if you had me on no weight, Jason. You did, and I appreciate that. But nigga, you still was light skin. Did you change your light skin? You didn't? What nigga, I was jealous of you. Shit. I'm gonna keep it real. I was jealous. Fuck you mean. Every girl that come by, they see my black crispy ass looking like Matumbo, and they see your light skin ass, and they want to have a baby by you, they get light skin babies. You think I'm gonna like you? Fuck you. Hey, Richard, I need to fill my cup up now. <laughs> but I am, I, I'm the only nigga that seemed like that's, that's being honest. I'm no, I, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie, Jason. That's how I, that's how I felt. Because what nigga gonna like you getting all the women? Be honest. What nigga gonna like you getting all the women? So when it happened to me, I'm the same black, ugly motherfucker that hated on you in high school, right? I didn't tell you, but I ain't like you. <laughs> but I was smart enough not to, I ain't gonna beef with no dude. I ain't say nothing. But at the end of the day, when I became the guy through success, because my black ass had to be successful, and that's what a lot of black motherfuckers don't be honest with. Your black ass got to be successful. So through success, now I got attention from all the women. So I understood it. I never let a nigga walk me into a situation because I understood when I had the wrong mindset. You helped me. You helped me lift weights. Never said nothing wrong to me. We always were cool. We was always recording. You didn't know in the back of my mind. I'm like, light skinned bitch ass nigga getting all these goddamn girls. Fuck this nigga. Oh, oh. Say how many sets we got? Bitch ass nigga goddamn lifting all these goddamn weights. Yeah, I kind of see why the whole like them, but I still don't like them. Motherfucker. <laughs> well, we can't have real conversations like that. We want to fake. We'll put the camera on and say Wakanda. No, fuck all that. We don't like each other. Well, as soon as I got drafted, as soon as I got money, you can look it up in the newspaper. I said, I'm no different than nobody else. I'm a regular man. I still say the same thing to this day. And people still bring up money. People still say you think like that because of money. And then you wonder why white folks want to get the fuck away from most of us. Because if your only argument is you're doing that because of money, or you're talking like that because of money, you're talking like that because you're white, you're talking like that because your skin color, who the fuck gonna want to be around you? Who the fuck gonna want to be around a motherfucker you can't talk to? The reason why. I love the woman in the room is because not all the times, but sometimes I can have a conversation with her. And the only woman and the only people I want to be around is people that I can have a conversation with. Because I'm from the hood, I understand what happens when you can't have a conversation. How many times you heard a woman say, I don't do too much talking. I don't do all that talking. What happened after she say that? 
violence. How many times you heard a man say, I ain't with all that talking, bro. I'm with that action. I don't do all that talking. Violence. The moment you can't have a conversation, the moment you cut off communication, violence is the only next step. That's why I speak very well. That's why I stand on what I say. And I'm not angry. I'm passionate. I know I'm drinking. I know I'm having fun. I know I'm laughing. I hope I entertained y'all a little bit because I'm really not mad. I'm not that type of guy. I don't have to be mad to punch you straight in the fucking face. I don't have to be mad to do that. And the only way I would punch you straight in the fucking face is if you put your hands on me. And everybody knows that about me. I don't have a, uh, a aggressive bone in my body towards a person that's just speaking his or her truth. That's your right to do so. I don't get it. I ain't no rapper. I ain't no rapper is a good one. I'm not gonna say it's a female trait. I'm just gonna say that's an insecure trait to worry about the next man. Once I dropped that and focused on the being the best me, boy, look at him. <laughs> Light skin or not, boy, look at him. <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna say. Strong core values make the difference. And see, that's, that's the thing, Richard. When you grew up in a house that I grew up in, how do you find strong core values in people just outside allegedly selling drugs? No, never selling drugs. But people outside selling drugs, people outside doing what our culture tell us is real, beating up niggas, fighting niggas, crash balling with dudes all the time. Uh, how can you have a baseline of I love, we are sick as a people and nobody can't tell me we not because nobody can't go against what I'm saying because they said it themselves. In the hood, if you got to put, if you are, my, one of my uncles got damn near 30, 40 kids. So that should tell you something. And all the other women that knew he had all these kids, they didn't stop fucking them. <laughs> so we are our own worst enemy. We just don't want nobody else to know. We just want somebody else to hold the bag for our bullshit. I grew up smack dab in the fucking hood, so I know. We are our own worst enemies. We do things that perpetuate a cycle of destruction, and then we want white people to pay for it. If you so superior to white people, I heard all these people say all this shit, and they give you all these statistics, and all these numbers, and white people were cave, uh, cave dwellers, and this and this and that. Okay, fine, they were. Now, how are these cave, quite, uh, uh, cave dwellers doing so well now? How are Nigerians coming over here, busting ass right now, and don't want to fuck with you, and they black, they, look, they blacker than you? How are Asians, how are Chinese, how are everybody coming over here that do not speak our language, Mexicans, they whipping the shit out of us. You don't think other people can see that we're becoming the laughing stock? You don't think other people can see that we're becoming useless in the room? Not all. Some. A lot. You don't think they see that? So, I don't know. I, I, I guess people gonna keep crying. I guess people gonna do what they do. But... I want to talk to all the people who talk these SJW liberal points. I want to talk to all the people who do all this fact checking and data bringing and all this monkey shit that don't got nothing to do with 2020. And if they have any level of success, I'm going to act, I'm going to tell you the way to beat me. If you have any level of success, then I'm going to ask you one fucking question. Why are you not preaching to people what you did to become successful? Why are you telling them more about things that block their success? Because if you became Elijah Bobby Henderson, I don't know what you do, but if you're successful, because you're talking, if you're successful, 
why can't you preach about the things that became made you become successful? I know a pastor. I know several pastors. I know a pastor that was a crackhead. That my brother was serving drugs. And he one of the best pastors now in any town. You know why? He has a story. He has a testimony. He's not faking no struggle. He's not aligning himself to a struggle. He came from the struggle. He is the struggle. He embodied the struggle. You come from a crackhead to getting your family to where they're at now? Motherfucker, I want to hear what you got to say. How did you do that? But see, a lot of times now, we can't say the truth. That pastor that became that from the mud can't talk about that. He has to talk about white liberal talking points. He has to talk about police brutality. He has to talk about all these things that deflect from the message. Motherfucker, if you came from a crackhead fighting over crack to being the best, one of the best pastors around the world that people pay to hear you talk, enough said, America is great. Let's talk about that every fucking day. Let's tell this little boy that every fucking day. Let's tell this little girl that every fucking day. That no matter what situation that you're in or come from, you can overcome it. That's what we need to be talking about. Right now, we got a lot of soy boys that never been through a goddamn thing. That just didn't get to the level of where they think they should be. So they are attaching themselves to some struggle that they never had. And they sound good. They're real educated. They say a lot of words that make you, the people that's in the hood uh, uh, say, oh, that's my leader. They can talk for me. That's my leader. Can't nobody lead you nowhere. I grew up in Winter Park, Florida and spent most of my time with my friends in Eatonville, Florida. Let me see, see more. One of the first black self-governing uh, municipalities in the United States. Founded in 1888. And that's cool and all. And I respect your upbringing. And I respect how you got it. And how you came. But I can name several white boys. White Mike. And a lot of white boys that went through it. I seen niggas jump on this boy. Do all kind of things. Just because he was white. And just because he did things that they couldn't do. So to. I, I like the yin and the yang. We can all talk about the yin. The problem in society now. Is they don't even want to mention the yang. They want to tear down statues. They want to do all these things. And if you do that, if you erase history, then the generation that comes when we all dead and gone and they don't know what happened, guess what will happen? That history will repeat itself. That history, it's a good thing. To, it sounds good to say, tear down this, tear down that. We got to erase this. Uh-uh. These scars I got on my arm, I can't tear them down. I earned these scars. I earned them. I earned these motherfucking scars. I know where these scars came from. I know where they came from. And these scars are a reminder to not get like that again. To not let somebody get you in that position again. That's what these scars remind me of. If you take these scars away from my arm, I might do the same shit again because I don't see it. This is a daily reminder of, boy, you was tripping. Boy, you can't let nobody get you that angry again. Calm your crazy ass down. And that's what I do. That's what I do. We living in a society now to where we respect the liars. We respect the liars. We respect the people that don't do shit really for black folk. We respect Al Sharpton, a motherfucker who's a federal informant, who's a goddamn snitch. And you motherfuckers keep bringing, y'all say no snitching, but you keep bringing this old dead face looking motherfucker. No respect, disrespect to the brother. We keep bringing this old dead face motherfucker to every rally to act like that's doing something when they line in their pockets. It's sad. It's sad. We need men to get back in households. We need women to understand that even if you don't want to be... Girl, you at the club or at work more than you with your kids. I can't. That ain't no woman. I can't get with that. 
Oh, I got to do what I got to do. No, half of you just didn't want to listen to the nigga you had the kid with. Half of you just out here just doing whatever you want to do. And boy, look at here. When I was single, I loved baby mamas. I love y'all. I love baby mamas. You know why? It's the easiest thing in the world to get as a, as a woman with kids. I know y'all don't like to hear it, and I know y'all might want to get mad at me. You don't have time to properly date. If you are a baby mama and you go to work and you have children, you are stressed the fuck out. So the moment a man like me or anybody that can come in and give you a relief from that, take you on a trip, the moment you get on that trip, you fucked. If you talk to a dude from out of town, he just got to text you and call you every other day. Hey, boo, yeah, yeah. I got a wife sitting next to me. Yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm going to see you. We're going to plan a trip to Colorado. We're going to plan a trip wherever. And then you go there and you give all your most prized possessions for a nigga you don't even know. I used to love baby mama. I love y'all to death. I just don't like when you, you got my kid because I know the shit you're going to do. <laughs> but the niggas with other I have more access to another man's kids than they do. How is that possible if we're going to say Wakanda? I've been around more niggas' kids than the, than the fucking daddy of that kid. Nigga, Martin Luther King was walking up the street, wasn't bothering nobody, and they were busting him in the head with bricks. That was protesting. Peaceful protesting. The moment you break down somebody's gate, the moment you burn up their shit, is you crazy? That ain't protesting, motherfucker. I'm going to show you how not to protest if you come to my goddamn house talking about you going to break down some y'all. I wouldn't give a damn what cell they put me in. You come here fucking around. Black, white, I don't see color. Well, I do see color. But I don't give a fuck what color you are. If you break down my gate and you in my yard, I'm not going to wave my gun because I'm black. I ain't got to just wave it. When I pull this motherfucker out, it's going to speak for me. So... Y'all can do all that listening to these white folk. And, and I'm going to tell you right goddamn now. You got to understand what the president's job is. If Joe Biden get in office, his number one job as commander in chief is to protect businesses and citizens from that type of shit that's going on now. So if you motherfuckers think you got a free pass to burn up America, as soon as they either get Trump out of office or Trump get reelected, your day is over. I can fucking guarantee you that. Whether Joe Biden win or Trump win, there's not a president in the history of America that's going to uh, allow you to continue burning down. By her getting voted in, we're going to curveball this shit. They know Joe Biden ain't shit. They know goddamn well this motherfucker can't spell or talk or say nothing. But that's their way to the White House. And I'm going to tell you right now, Regardless of whoever it is, after November, you will not be able to burn nothing. You will be going to jail. You will be getting foot to your ass. So if you believe these people all you want to, and I'm going to leave you with that message. We got to get back to being responsible. We got to get back to being God-fearing American. Because some of you motherfuckers don't even sound American no more. Some of you motherfuckers sound like you need to take the first boat to wherever the fuck country you like and get the fuck on. Because you don't sound American. My mama whooped my ass every other goddamn day, but I still love my mama. I wouldn't talk to her like you motherfuckers talking about America, desecrating the flag uh, and doing all this bullshit that you're doing, yelling in the middle of the streets because it sound good. I hope you motherfuckers that's yelling in the street, boy, I can't wait for them to catch your ass without a crowd. Ooh, oh, I can't wait for them to catch you punk motherfuckers without a crowd. Because the only reason why some of you talking so much is because you in a large crowd. I cannot wait till they bring them charges to you motherfuckers and say, hey, look, you did this and this and this uh, uh, during the time that you thought that shit was free. Motherfucker, you got 14 felonies right now. I can't wait. Because you motherfuckers are being hijacked. Your brains are being hijacked. But I got to go refill my cup because I'm out. And I'm going to go back to being positive. And I'm going to go back to laughing. And I'm going to go back to having a good time. But we all need to wake up on what we see going on. I'm tired of you women and you men getting on my page to argue with me about shit that you know you lying about. You know you lying about. 
It's just you get paid to lie about it. And if you don't get paid, then that's sad. Because you should be getting paid to lie like this. I believe that every person has something great in them. And if you lock into what it is about you that's great in you and stop letting people tell you what's going to harm you, what you should look out for, what you should be worried about, you would, focus, you would focus more on those things that you're great at. And if a poor boy with no shoes on can reach the levels that I reach to, then you motherfuckers that got parents, you motherfuckers that's wearing Jordans, you motherfuckers that got it way easier than me, if you change your mindset, you can do it too. Don't you never listen to no motherfucker that tell you you can't. History, I don't want to hear about all that shit. In 2020, what can't you do as an honor roll student, as a guy who presents himself in the right manner, as a guy who's respectful and a guy who's useful in the room? What can't you do? Some of you want to keep perpetuating this narrative that we just getting mowed down by the police. I don't want to hear that shit. I done said all kind of things to police. I done been pulled over more than you motherfuckers. And we can go get the records from Glen County. We can go get the records of how many times I've been stopped when they thought I was a drug dealer. We can go get the records of how many times. See, one thing about me, I have life experience behind the way I speak. So it's not me being, thinking I'm better than you. I have life experience behind the way that I speak. I was the number one draft pick getting pulled over on I-95, coming back from Miami, and they threw all my shit on the highway because of affiliation of with a person. I've been pulled over more than all of you, and I'm still alive. Why is that? Because I ain't cackling. God help us if we continue down this path. But I'm going to stay righteous. I'm going to stay a man. I'm not going to let nobody tell me ain't no such thing as a man. Ain't no such thing as a woman. Fuck all that. There's a certain things mean something. Words mean something. And now we're not listening to the words that people are saying. And we're not looking at the outcomes after the words are being said. I implore all of you to start watching your news carefully. Turn the sound off. Just turn the sound off and watch. Watch what's happening in American cities. And then ask yourself, what if that was your business? What if that was the city you lived in? What if that was your neighbor? Hell, what if it was you? And then tell me if this is the America you want to live in. Time to get back to peace. And it's time for me to get back to my Tito's. Tito's, y'all better bring me a check. I had this cup. I enjoyed myself. I Hopefully I entertained y'all. Some of it was for shock value. Some of it wasn't. Uh, Elijah Bobby Henderson and all the people that like to talk and want to talk all this shit, I would love to talk to you. Because I'm going to hit you with them hot facts. Love y'all. Salute.